Ghana's finance minister, Sepp Turka, today said Ghana's budget aims to trim the fiscal deficit to 9% from just over 12% in 2012. By enhancing tax revenues and controlling expenditure, Ghana's deficit has been a source of concern for international investors and analysts who say it presents uh, concerns about the strength of the currency and prospects for long-term growth in the oil, cocoa and gold producer. Let's now speak to Colin Zapia. He's an executive director at NDK Asset Management and he's on the line joining us from Accra to share some thoughts on the budget um, announcement today. Colin, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I guess this is always a big thing, budget for 2013, but just like I noted earlier, it seems analysts are widely disappointed that the deficit is, as, is extended to 9% of GDP. That's compared to 12% last year, so it is an improvement, but of course much higher than the 6.7% target for the government. Yeah, I think you're right uh, in a sense that, I mean, today when the minister came to parliament, what um, he told the people of Ghana is that they are going to now uh, reduce the deficit to um, 9%. And um, some of we, the analysts, um, um, our concern is that normally you get um, a, a government coming to parliament to present a budget. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the implementation side, they go, you know, wayward of what they've targeted themselves. Mm -hmm. You find um, government institutions spending more than what has been allocated to them. Right. And therefore, they come back to tell us that, I mean, the, the, what they have targeted was not really um, achieved at the end of the day. We are hoping that this year, maybe the, the new um, 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 Minister of um, um, Finance, Mr. Tepe, would definitely hold his words um, to, um, uh, hold, um, and therefore, you know, um, go according to what he's told the whole uh, country and international country as well. All right. Of course, um, another point to take away from that um, announcement is that the budget assumes a 15% increase in oil output. Of course, we did see some challenges with oil production last year. Um, it seems that we're in a good place now after those um, slowdowns in terms of um, output from the Tolo oil field. Your thoughts on how, how strong the, the economy looks going into 2013? I think when you take Ghana economy as a whole and looking at the macro um, indicators, I would say that in terms of growth, yes, we are we are really growing. And you, even with the high spending that we had, I'm sure some of us really believe that some of the spending did not even um, um, go to where we expected. You still see the economy growing at a rate of almost um, eight point something percent, um, as compared to um, where we had the oil from the first start. That was 2011. That recorded almost 14 percent. So I don't know that in terms of growth, yes, we are doing very well. But then if you look at um, other indicators like exchange rate, you look at interest rate, we have a situation where interest rates are so high. So yeah. I don't know that you have the private sector not being able to borrow to, you know, move the economy the way. Because I don't know that as the government is spending, if you still have the private sector also I mean, supporting the government in terms of developing and um, creating um, employment, then you have the economy even growing than what we even expect. But this is a situation where we don't have um, the private sector being actively involved in the um, creation of jobs in terms of interest rate. You know, we have a, within uh, six months or so, you see interest rate just moving high and high, and you ask yourself, why should such a thing be happening? Uh, because I think that the, our economy, looking at where we stand now, is very fragile in terms of the our other same rate like currency, um, the how the city perform against the dollar, how the city perform against the pound and the euro. They are very fragile because most of the goods that we have here are imported from outside. And anything something you know triggers on the international market, they just come into our economy and we are not able to control it. Though I know the central bank has been doing um, a bit in terms of how to um, go about this manipulating here and things here and there to just you know curb the, the, the effect. But then I think that we need to develop an economy where we will be able to be resistant to some of the shock that comes from the international market. Right. Uh, I think on the of, of our role, the, um, in terms of growth, as I said, we are, we are really growing very well. But yeah, clearly, there's no doubt. It's really seen from the government point of view. It's really seen from the government activities. So right. if we can involve the private sector, then this growth will be meaningful to all of us. In terms of um, getting the private sector involved, I want to get your thoughts on the impact of the um, cut in subsidies. I was in Accra over the weekend that it was in, enforced earlier this year. Your thoughts on how the private sector, of course, the consumer in, in um, Ghana is dealing with those um, tightening measures that the finance minister says need to happen to cut that deficit? 
Now, that's the, that is the issue most of the private sector, I mean, if you talk of the industry of um, um, uh, Ghana Industry Association, they will tell you that they are not really in support of that um, subsidy that came. But if you look at the long-term growth and, like, yes, it's good, the government should embark on such a thing. But even if you are increasing one side of the cost, you should look at the other side. I don't think if the government does not come to the private, um, the domestic economy to borrow or crowd out the private sector, you can sort of take the subsidy from the petroleum side or the energy side, but then if they have the opportunity to have a low interest rate as to how much they can even borrow from the banks to operate or to do business, I think then at the end of the day you are just balancing the two sides of the coin. But if you have high interest rate and you are also taking the subsidy from, 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 from them, then it, 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 you bring sort of hardship to, to, to the private sector and you don't really help them to grow. Because right. at the end of the day, we can also sit here and say uh, international or foreign direct investment should come and take over everything here. Even the foreign direct investment, also some of them even borrow from the local you know, market. Okay, call if it. they are still competing with the local you know, companies. Yeah, call then I really, I really need to, I really need to cut in, Colin. Thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts. I really need to cut in because I want to take this conversation to London because Alan Cameron, economist at FCMB UK, is standing by to join this discussion. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. And I want to get your thoughts on, on the um, budget presentation as it was today. Like I mentioned earlier, it seems many analysts are disappointed uh, on the deficit figure. What was the key takeaway for you uh, from that um, presentation by the finance minister? Sure. Well, I think they were in a position where they had very little choice but to, you know, suggest that some kind of consolidation was going to happen. It was coming off a very difficult year. However you want to state it, I think it's fair to say that expectations were, were more or less blown out of the water last year. So I think they were in a very tough spot. They had no choice but to offer some promise of consolidation, especially if they're trying to borrow money later this week. So again, I think tough spot. Um, with that in mind, they were probably in line with expectations. Right, of course, the, w another point to note is that the minister expects a stable currency this year after the city lost 20% in 2012. Are you confident that the city will be stable this year? No, I'm not entirely confident. I mean, if you look at the balance of payments, the big issue is that they're relying on quite a large amount of FDI and to a lesser extent portfolio inflows to plug a gap that's created by a big deficit in the trade account and I think to the extent that you know interest rates and yields on fixed income instruments stay relatively high and people are confident that things are moving in the right direction they, they, they may just get by okay but um, I would not take a bet on the CD this year I would not be confident that the CD would be in a position to appreciate in 2013 um, just just given purely given the dynamics within the balance of payments but I think a lot of investors going into Nigeria, um, Ghanaian bonds these days, it's not so much as appreciation, but I think it's the stability that they're looking for. So we'll be interested to see if that plays out. But I think another important point is the um, projections for crude oil output. They're looking to Im improve um, production by 15% this year, raise hopefully a half a billion dollars. Your thoughts on how the dynamics in the oil space are crucial to the uh, future prospects of this economy? Well, again, I remember um, only a couple of years ago when they first started pumping oil, the idea was that you had a country that had these very substantial twin deficits and that oil was going to be a game changer and would turn around the current account and over time would turn around the government finances as well. And, you know, in the interim, what's happened is basically the opposite. So, you know, we want to believe what they say, but if you look at the figures last year, kind of oil revenue is where they were most off the mark in terms of their expectations. So again, they're not coming from a position of strength, but uh, I think there is certainly some room for improvement, but that on its own would probably not be enough in my opinion. Well, I guess the good thing about Ghana is that there's that diversification in the economy. Of course, we now have oil. Of course, it's a cocoa producer, it's a gold uh, exporter. So your thoughts on, on the dynamics we're seeing in other sectors apart from oil these days? Sure, and I mean, I, I don't want to sound too harsh. There, there's no question that Ghana is one of the leading economies in Africa and in West Africa. And I know that people are very confident about, you know, its prospects in the next few years, and it's put up some impressive 
growth numbers over the last couple of years, but the fact is if you look last year at how much government spending increased, if you look at how much imports increased, and then you look at how much the economy actually grew in real terms, there seems to be a disconnect. And what that suggests is that a lot of the spending that happened last year actually wasn't that productive. Um, and I think, again, that's right. one of the reasons why some people expect inflation rates to change quite substantially this year because the natural byproduct of mm. you know, spending that's not matched by an increase in output is just higher prices. All right, of course, let's look at the broader economy now. 8.5% is the um, forecast for 2013. Do you think that they're likely to perform that well or do you think we're going to see a slowdown mm -hmm. um, following the slowdown we did see yet last year? Of course, the, the year before it was, there was, there was the, it was all about oil and the impact it had. We had that massive growth, but of course that is, it, we're going to see things slow down these days. Yeah, well I think last year you were coming off quite a high base, so it would have been very hard to replicate the figure that you had in 2011. That said, I think the official headline rate of growth, you know, it tends to vary a lot and in particular past quarters tend to be revised. So if you actually look at the composite um, economic indicator published by the central bank, I think that gives you a slightly better picture. And on that basis, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the economy growing at about 8.5%. Um, I think the years when it was growing kind of in the mid-double digits, up around 14%, are probably a thing of the past that was a one-off. but. It's reasonable to expect that it could get to eight and a half percent, and again, within the African context, that's probably about as as good as um, you could hope to have if you look at you know at the uh, you know other economies across the, across the continent.